The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Money Masters. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Tom O'Brien. Welcome, folks. We appreciate your growling and prowling with us out here. Right now, you get the Dow up five. NASDAQ is flat. S&Ps are down, uh, let's see. We get them down two. Gold is up by nine bucks at 11.64. You get silver up 15 cents at 15.97. The uh, oil market's pulling back slightly. We want to see how that oil market pulls back. It's uh, down because it hit the top of its range. Did what it's supposed to do. We'll see how this pullback uh, gets underway. It's down 91 cents right now at uh, 48.70. Uh, bonds, bonds continue higher, folks. Okay, <laughs> they, they, they just the ever ready bond market. You have the uh, 10 year up six ticks, 128.21. 30 is up 21 at 157.18. Uh, the Fed continues to say they're going up on rates. The market says you're out of your mind. You're not going up on rates. Um, bottom line, we'll, we'll find out who wins out uh, in the next few months. Uh, King dollar, King dollar continues lower. That's down 78 ticks at 94.80. And King dollar is into the trading bar from the uh, 24th of August. Uh, and I suspect that's going to get sucked right down to the bottom of that bar. We'll see whether um, that actually breaks and we get to 85. Because uh, at the 92.50 area in, the, in King dollar, you break that. You know, and we'll, we came down hard the first time. There's nothing supporting that because King Dollar had gone up so fast. Euro right now is at 113, and the yen's trading out here at 120.07. Um, uh, you know, uh, as we just listened to our man, Mr. Larry Pesavento, great show as usual. Um, today's Columbus Day, and that will slow down um, the amount of volume in the trade. It won't slow down the. Uh, volatility going back and forth. I think the ranges are probably already set. Um, you know, th those ranges are going to be kind of tight out here today, but we'll see where this shakes out. What we did have on Friday was this. Uh, Friday had anemic volume as you were coming into your last swing high, which is the 17th of September, and uh, it was pretty dramatic, by the way. Uh, you know, we did 107 million shares on the NY, I mean, on the SPY versus 276 million. You know, so how we trade out here today um, is going to say quite a bit. S subtly, it's going to say quite a bit. The reason being is this. If, in fact, the S&P can push just a little bit higher and you have a contraction of volume again, guess what? That sets up a really nice scene for the bears. Why? Because the further that you push into that high and have a dramatic change of volume, which we already had, by the way, um, that sets up probability-wise that you're coming lower. Uh, we look at the NDX 100. Uh, this is going to be the, this is the really intriguing one. Uh, the reason being is that what you did have on Friday is this. Um, it failed on price and volume as you came into that swing point. Uh, what we did is this. We, we did 23 million shares. We hit a price point out there of uh, 106.73. The low of the high is 106.64. That was 56 million. Uh, that being said, you could actually learn more about what had happened in the market versus didn't happen. And what you did have in that aspect, even with the NDX failing, is that you had Apple pressing forward and it had some decent price spread in it. Uh, Apple got to a price point. What Apple did is it uh, did 52 million shares. You know, you were coming into 46 million. And now you, the, the benchmark, however, is 76. What I'd really like to see is Apple actually hit the 113.51 um, area. I like, it doesn't look like it's going to do it today, but it, it would have been sweet uh, if it had done it. Why? Because that is the little disconnect that we're dealing with right now inside the NDX 100. Not disconnect. That's a disconnect if you're a bear, not a bull. Um, if you're a bull, bottom line, uh, you don't want it to hit <laughs> that just yet because you want to hit it with volume. If we go inside the IBB, uh, bottom line, the IBB still doesn't have any juice. In fact, uh, if we look at the strength versus the weakness inside the NDX 100 today, uh, Regenerin is the number one. Regenerin is up 20 bucks uh, at 524.19. Um, oh, that's going to be interesting because Amgen was number three. Let's see where Amgen is right now. Amgen is up 330 at 152. Uh, it's given it up uh, a bit. Let's go take a look 
at the strength versus the whole weakness, though. Uh, the strength is Ray Jenneran. Uh, second would be uh, Mattel is up 63 cents. You get American Airlines up a buck ten. Oh, Amgen just jumped up again. That's up. That's number four. Now, taken away from it on the way down, you get uh, oh Tractor Supply. Tractor Supply is off three bucks. You have Viacom down 83 cents. Whole Foods off 56 cents. And INCY is down a buck sixty-one. INCY is a trip, man. That thing absolutely trades all over the place, big time too. Uh, we take a look at the strength versus the weakness uh, inside the Dow Industrials. Let's go put this baby up. Let's see where she is. Dow. Okay, inside the Dow, this is what we have. The uh, strength, United Health is up 132. Johnson & Johnson is up 71. Goldman is up 101. Goldman's been getting killed. And um, Visa is up 42. Taken away from it. On the way down, you get Merck down 96. Chevron's off 91. Microsoft's down 43. And DuPont is down 44. Now, let's go look at Chevron because Chevron, uh, off that low, folks, was the strongest oil stock there was. So Chevron, just a slow rollover, man. It would be really sweet if Chevron can get down to a boat. 77 bucks. That would be a really sweet pullback, uh, and that would be a big buy, because the way that Chevron is trading right now, let me see this for a second. Yeah, it's just like the, okay, so Chevron on a longer basis, yeah, and I see longer two or three months or something, Chevron's set up to go to 112. See, there was nothing on the way down for the, you know, when these broke, Downtown, they broke downtown, they broke big downtown, all of the above. This, this has built cars now for almost two months. You had the price spread on a weekly. And when you go down this fast, as, as the oils did, you can go up just as fast after a little base building. And that, by the way, that still can be a dead cat bounce, but um, 98 bucks, that's not, that's not a bad deal. You, you get in at uh, 80 bucks, you're going for, what did I say, 98? Yeah, 98. Exxon Mobil, we go take a look at Exxon Mobil. Exxon Mobil, same setup. Exxon's rolling over slightly today. Uh, Exxon's trading at 78. That wants to go to 82. Oh, see, that's not, see, mm, interesting. The, Chevron's the play there. Chevron's the play. It's a better risk reward. It's a wider price spread, all of the above. Uh, gold, let's go over to the gold market. We take a look at gold. Uh, GCC. Gold, 68,000 contracts. You're over the swing point of the September 24th. You're going after August 24th. I expect you're going to you're gonna be, you'll build some more cars here. Um, this little baby is going to be up into the uh, 1234 before you know it. You know, once you, now, gold has built cars for quite a period of time. If we go take a look at the XAU, the HUI, uh, what you have with... XAU out here, we're at 55, 53. You're already over that to the 54, 74 area. And let's put this on a weekly and see how they line up. Ooh, that's nice. Okay, so check it out. Last week we did 260 million shares going into 204. That's what you need. That's what you need. That's impressive. That's really impressive, actually. Okay, so check this out. The XAU is on its way to 62 to 77. It's got the juice. How about that? Let's see what the HUI is doing. HUI right now is at 133.37. We did 144 million. You're going, now nice. Okay, same deal. You get some harmony there. You did last week. Weekly basis, 144 million. You're going into a swing with 115. You're going into the downdraft that had uh, 144. So it has it all. Bottom line, they, these, these babies are going. That's going to be intriguing. Because that's really hard to do, by the way, too, folks, okay? Because what we have there, uh, as you're looking at that, what we had is that we had an aspect that the actual gold contract needs more volume, slightly more volume. Um, the equities, however, don't. The equities have the juice behind the move. Uh, bonds, bottom line, bonds are just amazing, man. B bonds, you know, continue to want higher price. And uh, I expect you're going to, you know, we're at uh, the 10s at 128.22.
anything on inside 128.19 is that's that a complex ABC. And it just blew away, the 10 year just blew away the October 24th, I mean that October, yeah, August 24th uh, with price, with volume, with all of the above. That's a structure that wants to send the 10 up to 131. Uh, we take a look at the, uh, the structure right now, you're at 2.08 on the yield. So we're gonna be right back under, we're going to be breaking that 2% uh, number. As I said a little bit earlier, yeah, the Fed, uh, all the Fed officials are out there saying they're going to go up. They're not going up on rates. And King Dollar, King Dollar bottom line continues to get sold. Uh, the, the index right now is at 94.79. Now that has to get out of 95.27 to help itself. You know, that's not that far away. Uh, what is that, a half a penny? Uh, but bottom line is that once you're into it, you know, we'll see whether it can struggle to get itself out. Uh, thus far, it hasn't done much this morning. And that's after, you know, you had uh, a bunch of countries meeting in Europe over the weekend. Uh, you know, bottom line is that the, the propaganda out of it is that, yeah, the, their central banks are saying, um, well, that's the propaganda on the Wall Street Journal this morning, that their central banks are saying, hey, get it over with and raise the rates. They, they, they don't want them to raise the rates, folks. Okay, it's not even close. If you, if you, go, if you go through that, um, a few of the articles, the amount of dollar bonds that are out there are incredible. These countries are not going to be able to pay back these dollar bonds. Just, their currencies got destroyed. You're talking about uh, they took the dollar bonds out at 12, 10 percent. They're going to be paying like 30 or 40 percent because of the currency conversion right now. You stay right there, folks. We'll come right back. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. 
You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We We take take it it every every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Tom, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow right now is uh, down 13. The Nasdaq's off 12. S&Ps are down uh, 4.5. And, uh, four and, a half, and uh, it looks like uh, inside the uh, S&P's, uh, there's going to be a little selling pressure here. The, uh, if we take a look at this uh, future, what you're going to see is that, uh, let's pull this up here. Okay, so we're at, uh, we've hit a high of uh, 2012. Right now you're at uh, 2003. Um, and the way that we just uh, came into this, you know, the bottom of this range thus far is uh, the, the lows of Friday, which was uh, 1998 and, uh, ni- yeah, 1998. Uh, what we're going to do here right now is that the first hit in this, um, it's not extensive volume-wise, but they got a price-wise going. So once, once they got it into this uh, 2000, or 22, uh, 2002, they're going to press this into the 2000, just to see if they can break that number. Um, you know, we'll see where this shakes out in the next few minutes. But that, uh, in the context that uh, you, you're going to have a slower trading day, it's going to be interesting watching that whole thing shake out. Now, let's go over to the XLE. We take a look at the XLE. Of course, the, with the XLE, we have the oil and gas large integrated uh, equities. That's down $1.15 right now. And you're pulling back a dramatically lighter volume. This oil trade is going to line up really nice, folks. This is going to get interesting watching this shake out. So, so watch this. We're at 67.82. We had hit a high of 69.67. You have volume right up until the 7th of October. So the 7th of October, the high was 68.94. We go two days higher, contract on volume somewhat. And that's normal when you get a nice run like that. And uh, this little baby uh, here, the first place I'd be looking at is 63.89 into this, uh, right at the top of the high strength bar. Uh, but this, this is going to be wild watching this whole thing shake out. The reason being, folks, is this. What happens with these when you've got killed on, on a sector, and I suspect it happens with all sectors, but I'm used to the commodity sector getting killed. <laughs> And so what happens is that when they get killed, then they build a base and they come off that base. What seems to happen, and oil's done it twice thus far, they really can't get going until two or three times. They have to get going, suck more money in, blow that money out, do it again. People get burnt again. Then the baby goes. But what you have, the, uh, the probability evidence inside here is that as we come off the Lows August 26th, 7th, and 8th, you had volume. You pull back with lighter volume. And, you know, it seems hard to, you know, comprehend that you can go from 66 right back down to 58. Then you go back up to 69. It's like even what they're saying now, it's like, man, you really go back to, you know, 66, 65, 64. Yeah, you can. That's, that's how they like to trade. It's just how they like to trade. We go to the XLF. The XLF is pleading with the Fed to go up on rates. And this is where it's going to be really wild watching this whole thing shake out because the XLF is trading at uh, 2323. Uh, on Friday, it actually had some juice too, but it, did, it couldn't hold price. You know, we did 47 million shares. Now you're going against 61 million, but they're selling it right up there. They're selling it at the top of that range. And that's saying that, you know, bottom line, 
that the Fed is not going to do the banks a favor. See, the, 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 the correlation inside the Fed, the, the wild card would be that the Fed continues to say that they're going to go up on rates. The market's saying no. We know that the Fed is only in business to protect the banks. I mean, you know, if, if we've learned anything in the aspect, well, they, they, it, it's good. I think it's good what they did. Uh, bottom line, bringing everything down in the, in the debacle, uh, all of us would be done. Uh, but the reality is that they did that for the heavier players in the banks. There's, there's no two ways about that. The next thing they can do for the banks is go up on rates. Because as they go up on rates, the first thing that's going to happen is that the spread in between the structures of them lending uh, longer term and getting funded short term go up dramatically. And uh, bottom line, uh, that is where problems always come in the marketplace on a longer period of time, but that's where the banks can make money hand over fist because you got to remember something. They can do a ratio of 10 to 1, and so 10 to 1 specifically means that nine of those dollars they don't even have, they're lending air, and they're getting interest on lending air, so it's a big number. Some of the higher volume stocks we got out here, oh, look at that, Eli Lilly, that's getting smoked, that's down six bucks, we'll go take a look at that. Uh, Twitter's off a of buck thirty-nine. You got uh, VMware down six ninety-five. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Uh, Michael Dell's going to take over EMC. Let's go take a look at EMC. You know, you talk about a smart guy, man. Holy cow! That guy ended up taking his company private, comes back out and takes over a powerhouse. Pretty amazing. It's Tom O'Brien. This is TFNN, folks. Dow right now is up two. Nasdaq's down five. S&P's are up two and a half. No, down three and a half. We're going to be right back. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. EverBank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, visit everbank.com slash TFNN to find out what they can do for you. Again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. Visit them today. EverBank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the Taz Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The Taz Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed has proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. 
TFNN has just announced a brand new morning lineup that is geared specifically for traders in this volatile traders market. Every morning at 8 a.m., John Logan starts things off with his daily program, The Global Market Pulse. At 9 a.m., Larry Pesavento trades the market during the market open Monday through Friday on Trade What You See. At 10 a.m., Tom O'Brien hosts the Money Masters for the hour, and Basil Chapman hosts his Tiger Technicians Hour at 11 a.m. From 8 a.m. till noon every market day, these traders are with you as they provide up-to-the-second market information so that you can make the most educated and profitable trades possible. The new TFNN morning lineup is happening right now. Tune in to see for yourself what kind of actionable trading discussion they have each morning, Monday through Friday, starting at 8 a.m., live only on Tiger TV at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, we have the uh, Dow Industrials right now up six. Nasdaq's down four. S&Ps are off uh, two and a half. And uh, we take a look at some of the uh, higher volume ones. Uh, number one uh, down, uh, this is going to be a trip, VMware. VMware is down a uh, 745. You got Eli Lilly off uh, 650. Let's go take a look and see what's happening with Eli Lilly here. L-L-Y. VMware, what's going on there is that Michael Dell's taking over um, well, they claim that it's a merger, but it's definitely a takeover. Uh, taking over EMC, and uh, inside of that, uh, they're going to uh, basically, um, they're going for, I believe it's 23 bucks a share. Um, no, 33 bucks a share. They're claiming it's worth 33, but bottom line is EMC is only trading at 27. So, market saying that's what it is. We'll see where that shakes out. If we do go look at uh, Eli Lilly, uh, we have with Eli Lilly out here this morning. Uh, it's trading down at uh, 79.72, uh, and, and what's going on is that uh, they're, let's see, they're, they're terminating a phase three trial of uh, one of their drugs, and evidently that was going to be a, a very large drug if the market is taking them south uh, in this way. Uh, so what we have with, with the Eli Lilly right now, it's pretty amazing too. You've, you've traded down to $78.30. You've done 13 million shares, and this was going after a high volume test from the August 25th area, and it's gonna blow it apart. We did 7.2 million shares on the, well, actually, the, the 24th, the downdraft, it was at 79.50. It did 8.5 million shares there. Then you went to a lower low, the following day 7786 with 6.4 million you're coming into that with big volume that is setting up that's setting up like a 51 yeah 51 areas 51 areas gain um on eli Lilly. so that's going to be uh, problematic now let's go back over uh, inside the IBB and see what we have happening uh, inside this IBB today. So the IBB is flat. You're down a buck and a half. And two of the largest stocks uh, inside the NDX 100 happen to be IBB stocks. You got Regeneron is up uh, $18. That's coming into the downdraft, however, with dramatically lighter volume. Uh, uh, actually, it's not. Actually, it's going to be, okay, so this is going to be a great one to watch. The reason being is this, folks. Watch this. Thus far, Regeneron has done 470,000 shares. You're only going into 1.5 million, and you have done that, which is pretty cool, um, inside the first 45 minutes of, first, first hour of trading. So what happens is this. The top of that downdraft is 529.50. We've hit 528. If you see the volume contract dramatically from here to the close, it would have been sweet if it actually hit the 529, if it was up another buck and a half. Uh, but bottom line, that would be a he he big heads up that that's the end of that move. 
That would be the bearish case. The bullish case would be that you actually get volume of 1.5 million. So, see, you should be able to get volume 1.5 million very easily. You should be way over that. But just watch how this trades out because many times what does happen on these counter trend bounces, you'll get the juice going right into it at the open. You get the trades at the open and then bingo. Then the whole thing dies on the vine. And if it dies on the vine, that's a huge heads up. Apple, we take a look at Apple out here. Uh, Apple uh, bottom line is uh, still no juice, uh, no juice uh, whatsoever inside uh, that, st that structure out there. The, uh, some of the Dow stocks, this is what you have inside the Dow. It looks to me thus far that these um, ranges are set up, but uh, we'll get back to that in a second. So you got IBM down 71 cents, uh, Walmart's up to 27, Big Mac is flat, you got Merck down 85, Oxy's down 80, you got uh, Exxon off 37, Cat's down 37, you get Ma Bell up 16. If we go inside the, the rest and P's and just look for these ranges right now, there's going to be a small range out here today. That's what it looks like. So if you're going to trade this small range, you better have fast fingers um, because the range itself compared to what we've been used to uh, <laughs> the last few weeks uh, is pretty tiny. And once the the market participants, uh, you know, have gotten used to this. It, it can stay tiny on a, on a basically holiday day. The range thus far is uh, 210, 200, yeah, 210, 2010 rather, 2010 to uh, 2000, it's 2001. So it's on a, on a normal <laughs> trading day before we got this volatility, and, and it, that would be uh, that would be a decent range. Uh, lately, that's that range is pretty tiny. Uh, this afternoon, folks. Uh, here, let's talk. If we talk some commodities here, uh, this afternoon, um, 3:30. My show uh, from 3 to 4, 3:30 this afternoon. Sal Gil Gil Gilberti, the uh, president of Tecrim Funds, is going to be on. We're going to be talking uh, commodities. We're going to be talking soybeans. We're going to be talking wheat. We're going to be talking sugarcane. Um, the right now out here inside the commodities. Let me pull this. Put the screen up here. What you're going to see is this. Uh, you get coffee up 3.5%, uh, aluminum's up 35 nickel's up 3 you get lean hogs up uh, 9 tenths of a percent, cattle's up 9 tenths, beans are up five, half a percent, silver's up 3 tenths of a percent, gold's up 3 tenths of a percent, natural gas is up 2 tenths. Uh, in the negative, you get sugar down 2%, uh, heating oil's off one5 If we do go look at sugar, sugar's been on a tear. Uh, sugar is down... Yeah, look at this, man. You, you, you want to buy pullbacks and sugar. Sugar just went from 11.54 a pound up to uh, 14.50 a pound. Man, that's quite a percentage move. Amazing. Yeah, you want to be all over that in the way back. If you uh, are looking for the ETF structure inside that, it's Kane, C-A-N-E. And uh, Kane, uh, that little baby had, you know, gone from uh, 7.90 up to 9.50. And, you know, if you come over to our website at TFNN to see the Tecrium Funds banner on the right-hand side, you can hit that banner. That'll bring you over to the site. You'll see uh, the different funds that they have. If, in fact, you're uh, looking to diversify uh, your portfolio into wheat, soybeans, uh, corn. Uh, let's see what that corn market's doing. So corn right now is trading at uh, 381 a bushel. Okay, this is pretty cool. Okay, so she's backing down. Yeah, this is going to be good. She's backing down to strength. So, cons at 381, a back down to like 364 would be a decent deal. This has been building a base out here for quite a while. 877-927-6648. Dow Industrials right now are up three. NASDAQ's down five. S&Ps are off uh, one. No, S&Ps are down three and a half. And uh, if we go to the SPY, we take a look at the setup inside the SPY out here. Yeah, so it's a, it's a shot setup. Uh, well, it, meaning shot in the aspect of the spread. The spread thus far is a 20156 down to 200.91. Uh, the small caps out here, small caps are trading um, at 115.36 and what the small caps had done also on Friday, we did 26 million shares. We got to 116.14, and that 
would have to close. You see, the small caps actually will fail today because uh, the close under, well, actually, 116.68. Yeah, see, the small caps didn't get to the September 17th level. So the small caps will show, you stay with it. If the small caps were there today, the small caps would end up having a failure out here today on price, on volume, uh, as you get that small roll uh, happening. We go over to the um, Europe. We take a look at the, the FTSE out here. The FTSE's down 52. That's got a small roll going on. And if we bring this up and we put this, we can put this on a weekly just to see how it came into the downdraft. Um, the weekly we did uh, 4.1 billion shares. It came down with 6 billion. You're going into three. It's not that bad, actually. So the FTSE would have to get back inside 6284. The DAX in Germany. DAX in Germany never made it to the top of its range, meaning the downdraft. Yeah, the DAX in Germany is kind of set up like the, the NASDAQ. So the DAX in Germany did a half billion shares going into 843 million and couldn't, couldn't handle the price. Yeah. It's interesting that the, the DAX, you know, certainly is not the NASDAQ. Uh, the DAX are the 30 of the biggest blue chip stocks uh, on this Frankfurt Stock Exchange. But what the DAX does do is that the DAX trades like the NASDAQ. You know, highly volatile, swings around big time. Now let's go over to the gold market. They're whacking that gold market right now. Uh, gold was up $9 when we started the program. Right now it's up $3.90. And we take a look at this. Let's see what we got. So I love this, man. So check this out, folks. So when we go topside this morning, the bottom of the top side run is 1158.90. You had 4,100 contracts there. Now, when you come down and the volume comes out of the equity or the currency or the commodity before you hit the swing point, it's beautiful. Why? Because as it gets into the swing point, normally it gets too tired. That's what we just had happen in the gold market. Um, and what it does also is this. It, it, well, here, let, let's go through it first. So the sell down. You had 5,500 contracts. Gold sold from 11.65 to 11.60. The next 10 minute, guess what? You only can do 2,500. It rejected lower price. It got to 11.58.70. So you got under the 11.58.90. You rejected it with lower price, and you're going to have lighter volume. That's just a normal pullback. And in the gold market, they can move that around very quickly. Um, and they do move it around very quickly. If we go over to the silver market, we take a look at silver. Silver out right now is trading at 18, no, 18, yeah, no, 1587. Put this back on it. See what she's done. There she is. See, silver's going to be really lucky. You know what silver's lucky about, too? Is it because silver had got cracked so many times on the way down and then just kept rejecting all of those that you have a couple really high-volume spikes? One of them is at 15.82. And what happened there is that well, the first leg down had 1,300 contracts, but that's not even close because, um, well, it's close, but um, 1,400 contracts, you have to crack it heavier than 1,400 contracts. And that's at the 1582 area. Silver's doing the exact same thing. And what, what's also going on here is this. So check this out. This is always cool. Silver this morning has a high volume swing point at 1607. That's where it's going. That's, that's where that thing is set up. You know? So when you test both sides, and in, in this case, silver has a high volume swing. Let me see if gold has a high volume swing also. This is intraday now I'm talking about. So, I don't think gold has it. Gold doesn't have it. No, gold doesn't have it. Silver has it though. So, silver's gonna be the one to keep, keep your eye on once again. 
And what has happened, uh, no doubt, is that the silver market itself has saved itself three separate times, come off the low, did the price spread, did all the above. And um, it's, it's technically, they're set up to go to the May highs. Fundamentally, my take on this is that all foreign, cur yeah, foreign currency, fiat currencies are getting weaker against hard assets. And that's going to be straight across, you know, the table everywhere, folks, okay? Um, it's, it's pretty wild, you know, watching the correlation of what is actually happening inside the hard asset market. Um, and if you pick it apart, meaning you pick apart what something is worth that we're buying every day and multiply it times the amount that you're looking at any hard asset, it'll actually blow your mind. That, you know, you can take Starbucks coffee and say, okay, it's either three bucks or five dollars a cup. If I buy something that's a hard asset, how many cups of that is it going to cost? You, do it, you can do it at church. You can do it with all those consumable items that we have. What you're going to see is that there's a total disconnect as to the aspect of what that hard asset is costing versus what we are actually paying for those consumables. And it, I think the way it, ha it works in your head is that because it's only small amounts that you're paying, you don't realize the outrageousness of what you're actually paying for something that gets thrown away um, and digested uh, versus what uh, is a hard asset that as what it takes. And when you put that together, that's telling, we get inflation, man. Inflation, inflation's here. This is Tom O'Brien, this is TFNN. You stay right there, folks, we're coming right back. Dow up 12, NASDAQ is down two, S&Ps are up two and a half. We're gonna be right back. Does the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long 
long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Basil Chapman as he uses his Chapman Wave methodology to call the markets. The Tiger Technician's Hour, next on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. Let's go to uh, Lou in Nashville, New Hampshire. Hey, Lou, what's going on? Hey, Tom, what's happening? How you doing, man? Thanks for calling. Thanks Get, for holding. Getting ready for winter. Oh boy! <laughs> yeah. Hey, you get you get a good fall up there first, man. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I uh, had a nugget, and I sold it this morning uh, at uh, fifty. Good for you. I was just wondering when uh, would be a good time to get back if you. So you got yeah. let's see nugt like a rock that thing's like dynamite it is no there's no doubt this is the 300 percent um bull of the new york arcas index folks okay and uh bottom line is that uh that is the hui uh, and the hui folks uh, bottom line has volume okay uh, so this is a nice setup, man. I mean, we just did this on the weekly, so check this out. This, with a contract itself, folks, needs more volume. The actual HUI, which is the nugget, okay, has the volume. We did 144 million shares going into 115 uh, of the downdraft. So uh, NUGT, what you'd be looking at is that uh, pullback-wise, you know, even 30. Yeah, see, this is weird, though. Like, is it really going to go to 33 again? 38, 38, you're at 45. It can go to 30, 40, 38 pretty easy. Oh, that's um, cool. You know, I, I, I suspect at this time, well, the way you could do this, uh, Lou, is this, is that if you're day trading it, right, what I would do is this, is that you take the nugget, right, and like right now, it's coming into... The last 10-minute bar came down with 151,000 going into 247. See, that's a nice little setup. If this wasn't a holiday today, then you could actually buy it there, and then you'd be selling it again at that 4951 area. Do you know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. Because I wouldn't do it today. You know, what I've done thus far, I tell folks, is this. I did two trades this morning. Um, as we one before I got on, one we we're on, uh, but I'm not going to go anymore after this because I the, the range is too small, man. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. That's kind of how it's sh shaking out. So if you're going to do more trades after this, be careful because this range is kind of set up, and um, I suspect we're going to kind of level out here. Which, if you're trading, you don't want that to happen. You want that volatility in. You know what I mean? Right. So, yes, I do. Cooking, brother. Okay. Hey, look. Uh, another thing, I was thinking of. Uh, Shorting uh, either S&P or, or NASDAQ. Go with the NASDAQ. Okay, right now. NASDAQ, let me pull it up. NQ, just so you know, I'm already shot the NASDAQ. Um, I like it. I like the position. Do you know what I mean? What you could do is this. I would wait. You could wait to the end of the day because what you're looking for is this. We failed on price and volume on Friday. 
with the, the queues closed at uh, 10653. You're at 10661. You need that close under 10660. So wait, just wait to the end of the day because if we close over that, like where we are right now, even though it's up 10 cents, that would say that, okay, you can go hit the top of that range, which is 10872. So just wait to the end of the day because you're not, it, it, it makes more sense to wait, man. Yeah, I use a. Uh, uh SQQQ. Yeah, I like trading that. Uh, that's the SQQ is the 300% pro shares, folks. Um, that's what that is. And you know, it's coming right into this last swing low. You're coming in there with dramatically lighter volume. The number is uh, 2185, and you've hit 2252 thus far. You know, but yeah, yeah. but don't wait it out. Just wait to the end of the okay. day because it's not like. You know, this market's not going to get down, you know, 20 S&P points or up 20 S&P points. Right. Cooking, brother. What, what's a good price to buy uh, SQQQ? SQQQ would be at the top of that down down day. So that's, uh, what, that's 2318. Okay. Have a great one, man. Have a safe one. You stay right Thank there. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, you stay right there, man. Mr. Basil Chapman's coming up next, folks. Have a great one. Have a safe one. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This is TFNN.